this video we're going to look at graphing a function with technology. In particular, we're going to use the Desmos graphing calculator, which you can find at www.desmos.com slash calculator. Now there's a couple of important things to note on the Desmos calculator. The first thing to notice is the left-hand panel. This is where you're going to add expressions and tables. Using the keyboard at the bottom of your screen, we can input something like y equals 2x plus 1. And immediately we see the graph appear. In fact, you probably saw the graph appear as soon as I started typing after the equal sign. If we wanted to add another line to this, we'd simply go to the plus icon above the left-hand list and add another expression. So we could add y equals negative 3x. And there's another graph. You can also add tables of values from this plus button in the left-hand panel. So we could add a table and input some values. Let's add the point 0, 1, and the point 1, 2. And you see that they're added over there in the graph. You can zoom in and out on the graph by pinching and zooming with your fingers. You can click and drag on the graph to move it left, right, up, or down. On the right side of the screen, you see a wrench. And in that wrench menu, you can change things like the display of the x-axis, the display of the y-axis, and you can move it into projector mode if you like, which makes a little bit darker lines. Remember that this is here in case you ever need a strange axis size. Like maybe you need to count by thousands. That's going to take forever pinching and zooming. In that case, we would just go in to edit the x-axis and the y-axis to accommodate that. Another important thing to know is that there's a home icon. So if you ever move so that you can't figure out where your graph is anymore, you can press the home icon and that's going to jump you right back to the center of your graph where the origin is 0, 0. Now would be a great time to pause this video and go ahead and try graphing the four items below, the three equations and the one table. And make sure that you also know how to label the horizontal and vertical axis. I'll give you a hint that's in that wrench menu. Okay, hopefully you're back now. We're going to start by graphing v equals 0.2t plus 1. When we pull up the Desmos keyboard, you'll notice there's an ABC button you can use to pull up the keyboard with all the letters. So we'll use V, capital V. We'll go back to the numeric keypad, so that's equals 0 0.2. Again, if we want the T, we can go back to the alphabetic keyboard. And then returning to the numeric keyboard, plus 1. And there's our graph. Looks great. The next item we're going to graph is x squared plus y squared equals 100. And hopefully this one was a little bit of a surprise. We graph this. Notice that x and y are on that numeric keypad, so they're really easy to find, as is the square key. So you can press x and then the a squared key plus y and then the a squared key equals 100. And we see that there's a really big circle there. And if you want to zoom in a little bit to see the whole thing, you can do that. The next item we're going to graph is r equals 1500 plus 12x. Capital R, back to the numeric menu, equals 1500 plus 12x. Now, I've altered my viewing window using that wrench menu so that the x-axis is between about negative 100 and 200 something, and the y-axis is between negative 500 and positive 4,000. That gives me a pretty nice view of the graph. Now, how did I know to do that? Well, this is going to start at a value of 1,500. And if you just enlarge the graph by pinching and zooming, you're going to see it super steep. And that's probably not what you want. So if you zoom in a bit with the wrench menu, you can get a little bit more accurate. Now, there was one more thing with this problem we have to do. We need to label the horizontal axis and the vertical axis with labels. So let's go back to that graph and back into that wrench menu. 
and on the x-axis we can add a label and the label we're going to add is number of units sold. On the y-axis we're going to add revenue in dollars. Okay so we see labels on both axes. One more note here to get a screenshot from this you can simply click on the share button on the top right corner and you can either use the link for sharing, like in a discussion board or a text with somebody, or you can actually export the image. You get some choices when you export the image, how big you want it to be, how thick you want your lines to be, and then you can just download it and drop it into a document. So when you're turning in problem sets, you can use that. The final example here is to put in a set of values. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna leave the labels on here because we wanna keep number of units sold, and on the y-axis, we're going to change this to cost in dollars. Let's remove the line, and we can do that by tapping the circular icon to the left of the equation that turns the line, or whatever function you're looking at, on and off. I'm going to add a table of values, and I'm going to change the top of this to be x and c. The first line of the table is 10, 32.55. The second line is 20 and 64.05. The third line is 30 and 92.50. The fourth line is 40 and 101.25. And the last line is 50 and 130.10. You can see those points on the graph they're near the origin and you may want to zoom into them to see them a little better. Notice that the labels on the axes move with the graph. So that's really nice because it means you can always see them. Again, if you wanted to turn these off, you would click on the circular icon and they'd go on and off. So you can click on the R graph and turn it on and off. And you can click on the table of values and turn it on and off.